founded in 72, turned 50. We've all been that environmental conscience of the world. We deliver the science, we tell the story of the planet. We are the global advocate. We work on environmental law. We are that tapestry upon which the multilateral environmental conventions, including the climate convention, uh, see themselves embroidered and we deal with the finance and business. And so that is a real reminder of Unibat 50 that you can't do it alone. You can draw a map over these countries that are most impacted by climate change today. And you can see that this is also where you have climate impacts, you have harvests that can no longer sustain the people there, you see an environmental implosion and that can lead to a societal implosion and can lead to either criminality, out migration, internal conflict, etc. Justice is an essential part of the environmental discussion. When we know that one in three African citizens had face water scarcity, then we understand climate inequality. Then we understand that those folks who are my neighbors here in Nairobi are producing very, very low CO2 emission. Uh, there is a study that showed that, you know, a Congolese person versus a UK person is 200 times more the UK person's emissions. When you travel to the Pacific Islands, then there is a clear realization of the injustice of it all. These are nations that have contributed nothing to, to what is happening in terms of climate change and are feeling the brunt. But we are all going to feel that brunt. It's just that some feel it sooner and harder than others. And so, yes, talking about loss and damage is critical and holding the world's feet to the fire of, in terms of justice, matters. When we subsidize hydrocarbon, we fail to understand that the costs of that subsidy are much higher than the subsidy. Think about it, children with asthma because of exhaust fume. Think about it, coastal erosions where fishermen cannot, and fisherwomen cannot have the, their livelihood secured. Think about it, constant inundations, wildfires. What are the costs? These are societal costs. So the little subsidies that we have here is completely subsidizing the wrong thing and we need to shift that over to uh, long-term sustainable and we need to understand however that developing countries that are sitting on a pile of hydrocarbons that could potentially be a money maker for them the inequity of them foregoing that means that this money has to be on the table that helps them make those shifts issue is the courage of leaders and the economic interests that at times can create fog of decision making uh, of, uh, of leaders. You can't wait till 2045 and say, oh dear, it seems to be true. Now we really want to turn it. You got to do it in 2022 and 2023 so that you can put a safety net over those whose jobs will be impacted so that you can safely make that turn so that you will not see the kind of discord that COVID created because it was so sudden. That shift is a shift we want to avoid. That impact, sorry, of COVID is an impact we want to avoid. We want to make that shift now, but do it in a smart, linear way.
the science stands unassailably. What needs to happen is political courage. And political courage means that those who are in decisions do not take short-term my election term decisions. And this is not a left or right or political issue. It is an intergenerational justice issue. We're voting for the future. We're voting for our grandchildren.